morning. I'll just wait here for a minute until uh, we get some people on. This is Tuesday Talks at 1030. My name is Stacy Needenthal and we're going to be talking about the dash today. All right, let's see. So let me know when you're on. Say hello. Looking for it on my laptop here in case I can't see comments, which I can't always. Okay, not yet, not yet, not yet. Just hang with me. Hopefully you can see me here. Okay, it says I'm live. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. So this is, gosh, I am so, uh, what do you call it? Computer illiterate, it's not even funny. So um, let me know if you're here. Let me see your comments. I see a couple people that are jumping on. So hello, hello. Um, and we're gonna start here in a minute. Okay, well, I'm not sure why I can't see it. Anyway, hopefully I can see. Oh, there we go. I can see. I can see a comment. Hey, Dara, how are you doing? Good, good, good. You can see my comments. Yes, I love that. Okay, so this is Tuesday Talks at 1030. This is Connecting to Spirit with Stacy, where I come to you every Tuesday and we talk about things that maybe you're not so comfortable in speaking about with other people. So we talk about death and dying. We talk about meditation. We talk about um, coming back home. You know, all these things that, like I said, maybe you're not comfortable um, in talking with other people about. Um, I find that some of my clients will come to me kind of in secret, you know, that, you know, a family member can't know that they're speaking to me about such and such or, you know, about a reading. Um, so this is our safe space that we sit and we talk about it. So today we're going to talk about the dash. But first, let me just try one more time. Um, first, I just want to talk about um, some upcoming events. Yeah, all right. I'll just have to squint. Upcoming events. So, uh, Hip Gypsy Emporium, February 22nd is a gallery reading. Um, I will be in Bel Air, Maryland, February 26th and 27th. Private readings as well as gallery, as well as an intimate group reading. March 21st, um, intimate group reading at Hip Gypsy Emporium. March 13th, gallery reading at the Lodges in Gettysburg. Uh, March 18th and 19th, back to Bel Air. And then April 18th, here at Hip Gypsy with a gallery reading. I'm also creating a women's retreat in Tennessee. 
and we've got everything put together. I just have to start marketing it and get it um, typed up and on Facebook and on the website and um, on the email. So that'll be coming up too. So that's going to be a three day and three night women's retreat, grief retreat, spiritual retreat, however you want to look at it. Um, with readings and a full moon release and we'll be all together in one house and just you know it's that together time basically so um, sorry my dog is gonna bark of course so I always like to set my intentions before I start my name is Stacy I'm a child of God I'm a spiritual healer um, and I'm an evidential medium and I have the ability to channel spirit using love and light for my higher good and the higher good of those that God puts in my path. I'm not the medium that says, I see death all around you and you're going to be dead in 10 days. My gift, my prayer, is that God, spirit, angels, bring in the, lo the most loving message to help your spirit heal. When spirit comes through to me and spirits anyone who has been of this earth and has crossed over, they come through on my right and God's come through on my left. Today, this is not a reading. This is not an angel card reading or a mediumship reading. This is straight from the heart, but I do feel like it was guided from my God. So you may see me look up to the left from time to time. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what's been going on with me these last couple weeks, this last week. Um, you saw that I put a prayer request up. I'm so sorry about the dogs. Um, put a prayer request up because we lost... Um, a few members one of our members lost her husband one of our members lost a father and the other member lost a mother and you know the world is getting bigger every single day but the world is also getting smaller every single day we gain people and we lose people and it's thinking about how we um, walk through that and I apologize I'm gonna be reading a lot of it because I want to make sure that I get this right today um, these words just kind of came to me uh, yesterday and last night, plus a friend of mine shared the dash with me um, the other day. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting it right. So if you see me looking down to my notes um, a good bit, I do apologize. Um, like I said, I just, I just want to get it right. So a so, um, couple things have been going on. So a couple weeks ago, um, I was honored to be with a woman who took her last breath. The family came in, said their goodbyes, but just were not able to stay there with her emotionally until she passed. Um, and it was very beautiful and I was very honored to have been there with them, with her. Um, and then, And then I was honored by a daughter who I reached out to who was saying that her mother was getting ready to transition. And I do energy where I'm able to sometimes tap into the energy of the person that's transitioning to get a message to those that are left behind or to see where they're at in the transition. So I was able to give her daughter some peace and let her know that her mom was ready to transition. My friend who lost her father, um, very strong woman. Um, I was honored to be there with her during the, it really wasn't the cel celebration of life. Um, it, it was the viewing, it was the gathering of family and friends the night before. Um, and I was able to hopefully comfort her and allow her to be a little bit more comfortable and know that there was someone there that she could escape to if she needed to. Um, all these, all the, the, the people who have passed, I either knew personally or I knew a family member of theirs personally. So I asked for prayers to the family, to the friends, to everyone, because as a group, we are so much stronger. We are so much um, it's just that close knit to know that someone out there is praying for them. So, uh, my one friend who lost, um, her father sent me this real, this, whatever you want to call it, um, about the dash and I've heard of it before, but I never really listened to it. So I printed it out and I want to talk about the dash 
whoops, 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 whoops. And the dash was written by Linda Ellis. So I'm gonna read this to you. And I just want you to maybe, I don't care, sit with your eyes closed and think about what I'm saying. If, if you want to just, I don't know, I just really want you to pay attention to, to the meaning behind this. So it's called The Dash by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that the first came the date of birth and spoke the following date in tears, but said it matters almost. It mo but he said what matters most of all was the dash uh, between those years. For the dash represents all the time that they spent alive on earth. And now those, and now only those who loved them know what this little line is worth. For it matters not how much we owe, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend the dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can be still rearranged. If we could slow down enough to consider the truth and real and always try to understand the way that others feel. And be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering this special dash might last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Like, doesn't that really sink, in, sink into you? Doesn't that really make you think, here's my birth and here's my death? But what really matters is what's in between. Um, and when messaging a, a, a friend of mine, we lost a member, I'm gonna say it was Monday, Monday or Tuesday, um, that we lost a member and she was a dear friend of mine and I had a mutual friend um, that I sent her a message just to make sure that she knew that she had passed. And when messaging this mutual friend, this friend simply asks, but why does it hurt so much? And I was given this message from my guides. It just flowed. I feel like it was this download. And again, I'm going to read this to you. I apologize, but I want to get this so right because the people who have passed I knew personally, or I knew their loved ones personally. And I feel that it's very important for all of us to just be able to sit back and allow grief to kind of flow over you as you rethink of this loved one. So what I wrote back to her was, it hurts so much because you know firsthand the pain of cancer's torment. It dangles a carrot of hope and then it sharply pulls it back. It's a mind, you know what that is, to all family and friends, seeing it slowly take away the body of a once healthy loved one. And it leaves a glimpse, a shell of who they once were. But know that in spirit and in soul, they are very strong. She was a fighter and cancer pissed her off. And that made her fight even harder. I will miss seeing that smiling face walk through the shop, but I know one day I will see her again. Till then, I'm gonna tell myself that she's on a vacation from a job that her body did not like. She is basking in the sun, seeing the ocean and the mountains all at the same time. She's breathing in love and light, seeing those who left for vacation before she did. She is seeing the most ultimate, she is in the most ultimate peace and unimaginable love that one day we will all experience. My spiritual side sees beauty, but my human side is heartbroken. Her dash was filled with love and touching the hearts of those who needed a friendly face. My friend whose mother passed shared that every family 
Everyone that she met was family. She would always welcome them with coffee and with toast. Her dash became being a mother to the motherless, a friend to those who needed a, a friend, and a warm home and food and conversation. My other friend who lost her father of 93 years, he was 93 years old. She had mentioned to me that she wasn't sure how many people were gonna turn out the night before at the funeral. Because at 93, you expect most of, the, most of his friends had passed. But I witnessed nearly 100 people walking into that funeral home, hugging family members and telling stories. They laughed, they cried, they were present for the family. His dash was raising a family and being the father that a lot of people wish that we had. There were so many pictures that were around. His dash was sharing memories. He was well known in the community and he was, he was still living with his wife. I believe they said that the, um, they're married 71 years. I'm not exactly sure if that's right, but they both still lived in the home together that they had built. But I never met him, um, but I felt his presence there through the people that were there. For the member whose husband passed away, and again, I never met this husband, but this member has had um, a few readings from me. She sent family members to me. I consider her a friend. She buys from Hip Gypsy Emporium. She welcomes everybody. Anytime I say welcome our new members, I see her name, welcome. So I never met her husband, but because of how she spoke about him through her eyes, I saw him through her eyes. His dash was being the love of her life, a constant companion, her best friend, a provider, a husband. I tell you all this because I want you to think about what's in your dash. I often wonder how I'll be remembered. Um, you know, how big or, or how long will my dash be? I mean, I don't know how long we're gonna be here on this earth. You don't know how long we're gonna be on this earth. Will I be proud? of how, what is stuck in my dash or will I have regret? And I do self inventories quite often and I think about how I handled situations. Could I handle them better? Could I have been more loving? Should I have been more strict? Should I have reached out to others? So I think about these things in different situations and I feel like this is all part of my dash. How I compose myself, how I respond to people. We are all a work in progress. If you imagine God as the artist and he's chisel, chiseling this statue and the statue is you, all the rocks and everything that is chiseled away are things that you don't want, you no longer need. He's making this masterpiece of who we are to be. And if there are regrets, it's time to walk through them and fix them. We often speak or I often speak about um, little gestures gestures can mean the most. Um, it can have a huge impact on people. Um, it costs nothing to be kind. It costs nothing to smile at someone. It costs nothing to open the door for someone. You know, a smile can go a long way. Don't waste that smile. It's one random act of kindness every day. Fill that dash with random acts of kindness. Um, text someone. I'm thinking about you. You may get an answer back. You may not get an answer back or you may get, oh, I love you. I needed that. It's random. Buy somebody a cup of coffee. Have lunch with someone. Shovel someone's driveway, even if you don't know them. It's taking time out to be with those that you care about the most. We get so busy in our world and there's so much crap going on in our life that we need to just slow down a little bit. So, uh, what else can you fill the dash with? Um, something you've always wanted to do. Maybe fear has stopped you from doing something. Walk through the fear, try it, do it. We're only here for such a short light, short time. Um, do as much as you can. Anita Marjano uh, talked about living your life fearlessly fervently, faithfully, and amazingly. 
Don't you want to be the best version of you that you can be? Don't you want to feel fill your dash with as much love and respect for others? I feel that it is so important that we take this time, whether it, I don't know, maybe it's my age. Maybe it's because Maybe it's because I've got 60 creeping up. Um, maybe it's because I've lost several people in the last two weeks. Um, I'm not really sure why, but I just feel like instead of wasting my time worrying about something or competing for something, isn't my dash better used to serve others, to give love to others, to show others how much I love them, to be there for them. I deal with death a lot. I have a lot of grief that walks through my door. And my hope and my prayer is, is that through this reading, through this connecting with their loved one on the other side, I'm able to give them a moment, a snapshot, um, a real, I don't know how you want to say that, of knowing that their loved one is only a whisper away bringing back fond memories or messages for them that, that their loved one is okay, that they love them. But also, um, like the one woman who um, I got into her energy before she was passing and I had shared with the daughter, you know, all she wanted me to do was drink a cup of coffee and eat toast. Um, and I'm not a coffee drinker, but I thought, you know what? I'm in spirit. I'm in energy. I'll have a cup of coffee with her. And this friend of mine said, oh my gosh, yes, that was, that was mom. So it was letting her know that there was a validation to know that her loved one is okay. That's what I do. But the human part of me, when I lose a loved one, makes me think, oh, I grieve them. I miss them. We all miss them. We see what torments them, whether it is a long bout with an illness and you see this one strong person be whittled down into a shell of a person. We see it. We feel it, whether it's us or not. Things that I used to do when I'm young, when I was younger, good grief. My mind says I can do them, but when my body does them, I'm hurting for the next couple of days. Like, holy crap. When did that happen? Yesterday, I was 30 years old. Like, when did that happen? That dash went quickly. What have I done for almost 30 years that will fill this dash that at my eulogy, there will be stories of things that I did. And I don't wanna come from ego and I don't wanna sound morbid. And you've heard me say before that when my mother passed and we had her funeral, I enjoyed hearing stories about my mother. I knew my mom from the personality of my mom but when someone stood up and talked about a story of her from the viewpoint of being a coworker, a schoolmate, a friend, um, I got to learn new things about my mom that I had never known. People started sending me pictures and I'm like, oh my God, this is my mom, right? So her dash, my mom's dash was filled with smiles. She was always smiling. She connected to as many people as, as she possibly could. Her dash was filled with traveling and um, square dancing and planting flowers and having a beautiful garden. That was part of her dash. Her dash was being the matriarch of the family, even though at the time I didn't realize she was the matriarch, sorry, I grabbed ice, of the family. If there was a get together and my mom was hosting it, you better come because <laughs> if you don't, she's going to kind of like tell you about it. She brought the family together. People showed up for my mom. So think about what's in your dash. How will your dash look? What have you done? It doesn't mean that it's not too, it's, it's never too late to put something in that dash. You know, um, what are you going to leave behind to your kids, to your grandchildren, to family and friends that are around you. I had a friend that passed, and it's funny, this mutual friend that messaged me knew this friend as well. And um, with Deb, I call her my forever friend. Um, I met her in fourth grade when we moved from the country in town 
and I had to switch schools. And you, know, you walk into the school for the first time, you're in fourth grade for God's sakes. The people that you went to school with from kindergarten to third grade are no longer part of this, are, are, of your friends because they're in another school now. So when you walk into fourth grade and you know no one and everybody turns around to look at you and the teacher announces, we have a new classmate, you know, there's that anxiety that you feel. But I remember looking back and seeing her smiling face. And she and I connected almost immediately. And you know, we spent time back and forth at each other's homes. Um, her parents were unbelievable. Um, her mom would set me straight when I needed to be set straight as a little bit of a wild child. Um, and she didn't mince words. And her daddy was just fun loving and just kind of like scooped all the kids up around uh, her. I always thought that they were very strict parents, but the older that I got, I was like, oh my gosh, they knew what I didn't know. They moved over the mountain and I used to tease um, her parents. Oh, you think a mountain is gonna like separate our friendship? And we continued to be friends and we lost, we lost connection for a couple years and then we found each other again and it was like, no time had passed. And that was kind of how our friendship was. You know, I would call her and she was like, oh my God, I was just thinking about you. Or she would call me and I'm like, oh my God, I really need you for something. So she was my forever friend. Her dash was being there for me when other people weren't. Her dash was setting me straight when I needed to be set straight. Not a lot of my friends, um, would confront me and basically tell me to get off my pedestal. She would in a heartbeat. And I loved that about her. And when my mom was sick in the hospital, guess who was there? She was there, right? There's no coincidence in people who show up when they need to show up. Deb's dash was touching as many people as possible, loving them, being strict with who needed to be strict, like her parents, right? But she was so full of love. So what, what is in your dash? What do you want to have in your dash? Because this, this, as the poem goes, for that dash represents all the time that they spend alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. What's your little line worth? What do you want it to be worth? You know, we can't always say, okay, here's what my legacy is going to be. Because people may not agree that that's your legacy. Your legacy might be something else, you know? My Uncle Glenn's legacy was he taught me to love unconditionally. Even if there was somebody in the family I didn't particularly like, they were family and I needed to love them. He taught me what it was like to have a daddy figure, to be able to talk to someone no matter what and know that that person would not stand in judgment of me Love me anyway. Set me straight if I need it set straight. But show unconditional love. So what's in your dash? For that dash represents all the times that we spent alive on earth. Well, we're alive on earth. How are you spending it? And now only those who love them, may not be family, may be friends, know what that little line is worth. So it's not the beginning that matters. Yes. We celebrate the beginning. Oh, you had a baby. We have a baby shower, you know? And it's the beginning of the masterpiece. And it's not the end that's important. Although spiritually, a new chapter, a new rebirth has started for them. But it pains us to lose that loved one. It's what's in between. It's how you spent those days on earth. Who you spoke to, who you helped how you loved, how you responded, what you gave, what you did, um, stories about you. My father-in-law, Jerry, oh my God, best storyteller in the world. Could make you laugh, could make you laugh. Oh my gosh, so hard how he could make you laugh. But I'll tell you what, he was also the man that would get very, very serious if there was a man mistreating a woman and he would stand up for that woman. He was the man who taught my husband 
how to be the man that he is. And I'm forever thankful for that. So I want you to think about the dash. What's in the dash? How are you spending your life now? You have a choice. Um, we talked, it wasn't last week, it was the week before, I believe. Um, Deepak Chakra talked about depression is worrying about the past. Anxiety is worrying about the future. To have true peace, we need to live in the present, in the dash. Not at the beginning of the dates, not at the end of the dates, but what's in the middle. So I hope I got all of this right. Like I said, I wrote it down. I, I apologize for reading it, but it, it touched my heart so much. And you hear me say that a lot, but this is something that I feel was given to me from God, from my angels, from my guides, however you want to say it, to share with you. It's not a coincidence that my friend who lost her father received the video of the dash and she thought to send it to me. And although I had heard it before, I re-listened to it and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I've I don't think I heard the whole thing before. I think I just heard, you know, this is the beginning date, this is the end date, but how do you live your dash? I don't think I ever heard the whole poem. So I printed it out. I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And then I just kind of remembered what I'd been through these last couple weeks. Staying with a friend, um, a friend's mom who passed and being there when she took her last breath hearing and praying for a dear friend of mine who lost her battle with cancer, finding out that one of my client's husbands passed, reaching out to a friend when I saw a picture of her mother and she was like, I just need prayers. And then hearing of another dear friend's father passing. All of these things are part of my dash. Hopefully you will know, those who know me the best or are the closest to me, if you need me, I'm there. I'm that two o'clock in the morning friend. Are you? And maybe that's not part of your dash. I will drop everything and come to you if you're very important to me. And I don't mean that you're all not very important to me. You know what I mean? But I feel like I'm the helper. I'm the hand to help during grief, whether it's through a reading, whether it's through energy, whether it's through just being there, not saying anything, but just, you know, when my friends um, uh, was talking about her father's um, viewing and she had mentioned to me that she wasn't good in those type of circumstances and I said to her do you want me to come and she was like I'll call you if if I need you and I said should I just show up she said, well probably maybe and I sat in the back but I just kind of made eye contact with her every once in a while or got her out of there every once in a while or sat and held her hand it's something I would want someone to do for me my friend Deb at my mom's funeral um, when we were walking through the, um, we weren't, but when people were walking through the, I don't know if you'd call it the reception, the greeting line or whatever, it was my father, myself, and my sister. And my friend Deb was coming through and she and I both overheard something that was said to my father um, that didn't resonate very well with me. And I remember turning around and looking and her knowing my personality, she just kind of grabbed me by the shoulders and she said, show me where the bathroom is. And I was like, it's back there. And she says, no, 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 I need you to show me. I'm like, it's back there through the, and she goes, you need to take me to the bathroom, please. And she just kind of locked eyes with me, grabbed my hand and we walked back to the bathroom. She knew at that particular moment, I needed to get out of that line so that I did not react to what was said to my father. Her dash was, a lot of times she saved me. 
She's my savior, so my saving grace. Stop me from kicking somebody's butt during a funeral. <laughs> so what is your dash? For that dash represents all the time that we have spent alive on earth, and now only those who love them really know what it's worth. So it's not the beginning, it's not the end, it's what's in between. I pray that you all are living the life you love and loving the life you live. If not, you're the only one that can change it. Check out your dash. Do that self-inventory. What have I done lately for someone? What can I do for someone? What can I do for myself? You know? What can I do that will make me happy? What can I do that will make others happy and to help others have a better life? Or just to know that I'm there for them. What's in your dash? Maybe you're a musician. Maybe you're a historian. Maybe you're a face painter. Maybe whatever. Be your best. Do the best version of you that you can. You are the masterpiece that God is sculpting. Let's get rid of the rocks and the stones and the gunk that you don't need. And live your best life. For it is your destiny to touch as many people lovingly as you can so that your dash freaking sparkles all right guys i love you all i will talk to you all next tuesday at 10 30. um i think that's all i need to say all right guys bye bye